Hi there, so this is our first Photoshop tutorial since we are back after the autumn break. This week we are going to be creating uh, an atmosphere based on the word that we use in our mood board. So let's begin. So one of the main problems that, that sort of stimulated my, the idea to deliver this is that a lot of the 2D project uh, settings that I've seen so far for a 2D side scrolling game uh, incorporated using a sort of solid block of colour. So if we take the colour picker, if it'll load. Um, so if what I've seen a lot of is where the sky has been really blue, um, sort of a maximum intensity, uh, even to this colour, and also where the ground has been green, and also where the sort of the muddy areas or the mountains have been this really sort of rich brown. Um, which you know, which are okay, but uh, when they're applied all together, it can be really, really um, draining on the eyes and really quite stressful. So, I'm going to teach you how to create this really cool looking atmosphere, and hopefully, um, this will be applied to your other projects in which you'll be able to improve on your quality of backgrounds. So, um, just to just to inform you as well, because of the lack of the availability of the graphics tablets um, the following tutorials over the next sort of five or six weeks will be based solely on using a mouse um, so they won't be too intense and you should be able to achieve all the outcomes without a graphics tablet. if you have a graphics tablet that's great it can still be used um, that's fantastic but this is uh, suitable for in session and obviously outside of session use so Firstly, let's begin. So the first thing we're going to talk about is colour value. So the value of a colour is defined by its intensity. So a low value, for example, would start on this white end here and here. And as we increase the value of that colour, it will get darker and more intense and vibrant. And the same, so at the top, sorry, the same can be seen for this uh, tonal value, what we call tone, because white and black are not colours, they are tones of light and here we can see one for the colour red. So um, one of the things as I said that I've been seeing is lots of solid colour and this is wrong and this is wrong for one very very um, clear reason if we take a look at this image. Now the sky as you can see is not one solid block of colour depending on the positioning of the sun will determine how light an area of the sky is and also how dark another area is. In addition to that we also have light rays bouncing up back off the surface uh, if I get the brush just draw on so the light comes in and goes back straight back out and up. So I've still got my brush settings from when I have been digital painting this is not what we would like so let's just get, see if we can get back to a normal brush um, if we go back here let's get the flow, yeah it flows 100 mode so I'm just so here we go, so we're now back, yet. Yeah, there we are at our normal brushes. So let's just undo those. Okay, so the light comes down, hits off the surface, comes back up. In addition to that, we also have um, the density of the air. So as we look across, we're getting all the dust, all the bits of particles, um, filling, filling that in. Okay, so if I was to go to the color picker, we can see if I select down here we have this really sort of soft blue metallic blue grey and at the top we have a lovely sort of dark rich blue now what you'll notice about these colours is they are not up in this spectrum here these are incredibly unrealistic looking colours for the sky and these sort of get embedded with us for the cartoons that we've watched when we were younger and get built in that we have to go for this really really sort of rich blue um, which we don't want to avoid because this is unrealistic. Now, when we create our scene, it could be really, really easily, uh, easily done to go straight to the gradient tool and think, okay, let's replicate the sky. 
So if we create a new layer, let's just hide all these. Oh, there we go. Um, and go OK. Hold the shift. So we can hold the shift key and have this gradient and say, there we go. There's our sky. Um, the problem with this is a number of a number of things. Firstly, um, we lose control, especially of this lower gradient. So where this horizon air is in this space, we lose that control if we keep the image with like that with a solid color. So we need to really separate these um, apart um, and still apply the same value theory um, that we can see here um, but where we can add other things in between and control because space um, is not a solid uh, image as it is in a game okay it's built up of layers and layers and layers of different matter um, and we're going to in, in effect mimic that space between us through the use of layers as you can see down this left uh, right hand side sorry so if we look again so in previous weeks I've mentioned about file management and I'm just going to open these up so you can see all my layers are named subfold with subfolders um, and if we open them up so they've all been named so if you were to navigate through my scene as you'll be able to see on Moodle if you select the example you will see all the names you will see all the different layers that I've used and all the different effects that I've added to them so before we begin just one more thing uh, in the background there are fireworks going off as it's bonfire not bonfire not yet but, or due to well, yesterday it was sorry um, so we just have to sort of ignore that if it gets too distracting um, I do apologize so let's begin so the first thing I'm just going to close these off so the first thing that we want to do is um, so let's ignore that is create a new scene so I'll go to file um, go down to new and the new window file window will load up um, and the settings we want to do, or the very first thing we want to do, is rename our file. So I'm going to name this Atmosphere. Let's change my capitals. Atmosphere um, tutorial. So what we also want to do is create a custom size uh, image. So once we start playing about these edits, this will change here automatically. So as our 2D project for a side scrolling game which this uh, atmosphere will incorporate we want to um, make this in game maker um, these assets will then be uh, able to work towards your um, unit 78 I think I believe we might have to double check that um, and so they will serve another purpose than just for uh, the purpose of teaching you Photoshop and gaining uh, criteria for unit 72 so um, when we load up Game Maker, I think the default sort of window size is t 1020. I can't, I can't remember exactly. Um, but basically, what we don't want to do is just cover that space solely. So we'd end up with a window sort of this size that I'm making with the mouse now. We want to triple that so that our window has lots of space to work towards and through. So first thing we're going to do is change the width so what I've done is multiplied that by 3 and it equals uh, 3072 and remember we want to be working with pixels because that's what the software also operates in and we also want to create the height but keep the height exactly the same at 768 so we'll keep the resolution at 300 pixels an inch and we'll keep the color mode, the color mode will be in RGB as it's a screen based format and we'll keep that in 8 bits as the filter gallery as we'll be using some of those filters uh, will require it to be in 8 bits as it doesn't as some of the features don't work in anything higher now um, one point of this stage is as I've said before we can always work down so we can always take a large file and reduce it we c unfortunately we can't take a small file and make it bigger uh, without influencing or making poor the quality any poorer so really we want to keep the resolution quite high and so we can click OK so we have our image the first thing we are going to do is double click and keep the background nice and clear uh, unlock it sorry nice and clear and we'll just hide that away so we'll create a new layer this layer in fact actually we'll, we'll keep the, we'll the background locked 
for now. So we'll create a new layer. The first thing we're going to do is go for look at our mood board. So in my case, my one was uh, fungi, uh, which is obviously mushrooms, and the colour that I decided from that, which would be most suitable, is the colour red. So I'm going to go for quite a vibrant red because we are going to be working back into it. Okay, um, but I don't want to go too vibrant. Uh, where the, the pixels are really really burning out the screen um, so I wanted to go sort of just around here a nice sort of ruby red and what we're going to do is get the bucket tool and we're going to fill the layer with that colour so the first thing we want to do is think about the universe and think about our position with it this red represents the colour of my atmosphere or universe and well sorry atmosphere um, but behind that is obviously the universe which is full of stars now those stars uh, will f filter through from distant galaxies so we need to mimic that that's our first stage of creating depth so I'm going to rename this layer um, background and we're going to create a new layer and call this one stars so now what we want to do is what we could we could do there are several ways of doing this but what we are going to do is use the brush tool and we are going to take the size down to about between we want to create them between four and six pixels and we just want to keep the hardness um, we'll keep the hardness up and because we don't want it to feather and blend in and what we're going to do is just gently start stabbing at the background uh, I'm doing that in red so we change your colour to white. If you push Control Zero, we will fit this fill the screen, and then we can begin. So, as you can see here, you have to be quite delicate in these ones here, where I have sort of dragged my tablet uh, or mouse. It has taken uh, that swipe with it, and obviously these look incredibly unnatural. So we'll just erase those. So that's our first thing we need to be aware of. So we can go back to our brush tool after erasing them and start working back in. Now this is quite a difficult sort of process, but if we keep building this up, eventually we'll have a nice background of stars. So we'll really erase that one in a second because that's a bit too much. We'll just get a couple up here and we'll take this one away. So we've taken that one away and we will now change our brush size to about 6 and we'll just add a couple more more influential oh, okay. so that one we'll, we'll change that again as I said we have to be really really delicate, it can be quite hard at times ok, a really really stylish guy um, and also you know we, we don't have to do this as intense as I've done it we can work from sort of around two, a 2 um, point brush um, but I'm just cautious that you might not be able to see that from on this video playback. So we've created our stars, which is awesome. So the other thing we now need to think about is the fact that the universe has many different gases, atmospheres, and, and things in between our point of view on Earth and the point where we see out. And we really need to fill that information in. So we are going to create um, a folder okay because we've got to be constantly thinking about our management of um, our projects because if we were in a big studio we would like the rest of our colleagues to be able to find that we're going to call this um, folder background and i tell you what we are going to actually change this layer and call this uh, color and to keep in line with the example up on moodle and then we're going to drag these into this folder so what we need to do, as I said, is start to create this mist. So, what we are going to do is find a um, good example file online. Um, however, I have found it, found these already and uploaded these into the Moodle file. In Moodle file, uh, I think it's called Texture Pack. And if we go to open, if we go to Texture Pack, you will see we have this guy here. So first thing we, we need to do is um, change our colours because we want this to be in uh, a sort of tonal value scale. We don't want to retain any of this colour information. Okay, We want 
uh, to be dark from black to white uh, fading through in a monochrome so if we go to image adjustments and if we go to desaturate alternatively if you look at the hotkeys you can push shift control and u and there we have it we have our image now removed of all the color information now what we would like to do is to um, make these areas where the blue sky once was black this is because if we was to layer, layer this on our image now we would still um, we would still be able to see these areas and we wouldn't be able to actually see the red sky so if I actually we'll make a copy of that now just to demonstrate this to you so we go to control C once we've selected our old image I'll show you how to do that shortly and we can bring this into the scene and if we add this on top if we go for a screen you know we still see this really really light red in here and it's we want to see this color red in between we want this red to be able to filter through until that is completely black um, it will not do that so let's just take that back and we'll go to our sky so push control D um, so yeah to select a whole image if you take your mouse hover it over the display if you push control and if you can see that small square appearing if we then select the screen it will select the whole of the um, image and we're able to copy that across providing we have our layer selected so control D D selects so to create this area darker what we're going to do is go to image adjustments and down to our levels so at this stage we could probably click auto which it will do it for us um, but I would still like these areas to be a little bit darker okay so we're going to take this up there we are bring it up round to around this sort of round to about here maybe take the white a little bit lower so this will make the image the bright parts of the image a lot brighter and this will make it a lot darker so we can push OK now as you will notice um, I selected when I copied this image across um, I select I was chose an image that was the same height as the file that I knew I was working to and is also that width across um, that third which we made the multiple of three off with the pixels so we would like to fill this information across and we know it's got to be three times so there will be one here one here and one here now what we need to do is make that seamless so that there are no obvious lines down the middle so if I copy a couple of these across no. So again, if you click on that image, Control C, and we go Control V a couple of times. Okay, what we see here is this really, really, really um, obvious uh, disconnection between the two sides. So what we are going to do is make that connection disappear. So Control D again to select. If we go to um, Filter go down to other and we can go to offset okay now as you'll see here the offset has taken a vertical um, option we don't want to change that we want to change it horizontal going across because that's the way our game is going to go and that's the direction where it needs to be um, stitched together so let's see so really it doesn't matter too much how far in we go but we would like to get this sort of central to give us enough room either side to, to work and what we're going to do is use the clone tool. Now the clone tool, uh, or clone stamp tool, sorry, basically will select an area of this and paint it over the top. Okay, so if I select um, Alt, we'll, you'll see the crosshair has changed. This will select a starting point. So you can see here where this is really, really bright and this is really dark. We need to blend these in. So I'm going to select at this bright spot here and then start to paint obviously Alt sorry and select and then go over and let go and we can start to paint that out okay now as you can see on the other side we get this arrow on the left and that reads that information and applies it back over to this side okay so we can start to paint these in make them just look a little bit more natural um, and obviously we can pick new points to start from if we need to add any more extra bits in that's looking a bit hard so we'll take down the add to multiply will that work okay no it doesn't work it's a little bit hard though 
so we may need to pick um, an area such as this where it's blended a little bit more and bring that in just a little bit dark you can paint that on top there we go there we go now it's starting to get something that looks a little bit more authentic okay um, we can start to bring these parts in as well potentially oh, potentially oh, so maybe paint some of this in okay let's create a bigger brush actually so let's go for a hundred and we'll paint that back in okay um, and bring that of course there and we can start to actually remove these images down and actually we're starting to get rid of that line okay which is just what we wanted to do again I think that brightness was actually causing that problem oh, so if you un undo that and actually we can probably paint just a little bit of this in okay yeah there we are so there we go so what we're going to do now is now we have our seamless texture done so there's no obvious line between this middle it's copy that across so we can select the whole image Control c so again we're going down here selecting alt clicking that small screen Control c for copy and we are going to paste this three times now what we are going to do is move these across as you can see we've got some really nice um, seamless textures and the link between them is not obvious although we can tell and read that the pattern is repeating um, we can't see where that starts and ends which is exactly what we want and remember this is how you would produce modular rule, uh, walls for your 3D environments or anything that's going to be repeat, re repeated over and over um, as it saves on the memory and um, obviously means you, you can provide more assets into the scene so we could start to um, bring these layers in one by one but what would make this process a lot quicker is if we merge the layers so we're going to select the top layer and the bottom layer of the ones that we copied in we are going to right click and we are going to go to merge layers okay we are then going to rename this layer mist as essentially that's what it is okay we are then going to apply um, a blending mode which is screen and where are we there we are and we are going to take the opacity down to 12 okay so some depending on the color that you selected or based on your mood board um, you may need higher so actually I'm going to take this up to about 15 16 17 just just enough to see it. actually it's probably a little bit higher to so about 14 um, just enough to see it and we're starting to actually create now that density the fact that there is space and matter and particles and air and oxygen between us and outer space so um, the next stage is for, to add some uh, alternative difference you know so a bit more contrast to this so if I was to increase the contrast on this all or the value on this all the whole of that image would turn up and really we don't want to be doing that what we want to do is create some difference between this one layer to again make it appear as though it's got some depth that some things are a little bit closer than others that some things are slightly more dense than others on top so what we are going to do is create a new layer we're going to put this outside of this background layer and we are going to call this um, so mist overlay because we are going to overlay um, some detail over the mist so again if anyone else was working on it they would know exactly what we mean so what we're going to do is pick a softer red so more like a pinky color a really really sort of soft pastel not too dark because it will um, affect the image when we start to blend it um, in ways that we don't want it to and we are going to click OK we are then going to take our brush and what we're going to do is start to paint in sections on here so we're not going to paint every cloud but we're going to paint whole sections to make it look like it's a unified um, section of cloud that it belongs together um, what I've seen examples of people doing is painting random spots we don't want to follow random spots we want to follow where this cloud um, forms around this black space so 
we're on our new layer we are going to start to paint as you can see it's all nice and thick at this moment in time that's okay we are going to obviously apply different blending options to bring that in bring that around there you know, so we'll have one over here you know in fact we can make our brush slightly bigger and speed up the process so we'll get about 80 so there we are we're nice and thick okay and obviously we want to create a whole cloud okay we want to create that whole sort of difference coming in either side um, but we do want to retain um, some of the original detail we don't want to go too heavy with this excuse me I've got um, a bit of wind trapped in my stomach so I apologize if I'm burping down the microphone so now we've added a couple of these different spots in in fact we'll add another little bit here we'll just probably throw a little bit down here just to keep up that consistency okay and uh, we'll go up to color dodge because we want it to affect it we want it to invert it and you know have that influence now as you can see some areas are still showing through but we are going to reduce the opacity of this down so it becomes part of that image so i'm going for about 20. now the effect is actually really 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 subtle if and if i go back to uh, my original file we will see um, but you can't really tell any of that's there I think there's one there if you look very carefully and one around here um, but overall you can't tell and it actually creates that really 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 subtle difference that we are going for so at this stage I'm going to say save your work this is a really good practice to do I don't want to save that in the texture pack but we'll save it here so atmosphere tutorial and we'll call this um, the uh, online version as it's for the video okay so the next thing we're going to do is create a little folder for our overlay and we'll call this one um, overlay and we're going to put our mist in there so what we could do at this stage is start to say you know what I think it's time to stick our gradient in and that'll be that but actually what you'll find is that clouds all operate at different heights so if we were looking across you know you'd have sort of the big thicker rain clouds hanging around this height they'd have the thinner denser cloud not dense sorry um, sparse clouds further up and so we get a really really fine atmosphere obviously vapor rises right up and then comes down and then forms as a cloud and then drops so there are several layers of and obviously we have all the normal mist in the air between us so we want to keep building and working on top so, because remember our skies and our atmospheres are not flat. So what we're going to do now is add some more clouds that look like they belong um, really close to us, um, closer to the earth. So they're going to be a lot more, um, a higher value, no sorry, a lower value, um, or on the white. Um, so they're really, really visible and stand out. So let's, let's have a look. What we're going to do in fact we can close this you can save this um, i've already got one that i made earlier saved so i don't need to um, but i am going to open uh, the next lot of clouds so if we go to our texture pack um, you'll find uh, the cirrus clouds now i've edited this one for you in very much a similar fashion as before in fact i'll show you the original image if i can get it open it was this one here okay courtesy of Mr RK Pillsy okay so what I have done is again with the tones uh, reduced or desaturated the image I have then um, uh, fixed the level so this was really black and not um, a soft grey and I have then um, edited the edges in here and around sort of here and here so they don't cut off the image and so that they actually flow in now you will not be required to do this as I have placed the finished um, image in the texture pack okay so as you can see here this you can see where I've painted that in sort of cut that out so what we are going to do is double click there to unlock it we are then going to select again um, by put holding down control and keeping our mouse over the image to the square appears so click it left clicking and then we're going to copy Again, apologies about the um, gas. Can't stop burping today for some reason. And we're going to go control uh, V. Now, as you can see here, 
Um, the image is actually bigger than the one we were working to. The original image was not equal to the um, size that we were using. So we're going to have to resize. So we can go to Edit, Transform, and go to Scale because we want to change the scale. Now, if I was to go to these corners with where the selector is and move this in, we can start to walk the image. Now, I've seen some people doing this, okay? This is one of my pet hates because it is so obvious that the image has been warped and stretched and it is just horrible. Now, to the untrained eye, such as my nan, would probably think, yep, that looks amazing, that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But to the trained eye and the people that you want to be appealing to, i.e. those people in, in the business, you will need to work on this um, in a lot more, with a lot more care. So, when we are resizing, um, can I do it there? No, it's keeping it now. So let's push escape, let's go back and we'll go back to edit transform scale and if we hold down our shift key we will find when we bring this in that it will keep that those proportions it will no longer stretch that image okay so we're going to bring that one over here what we're going to do then oh sorry we want to keep that outside of our overlay layer let's just close these down for now and we're going to copy this layer now if I was to copy in another version it will be off scale again so to speed up that process we can just select the layer and drag this down to our new lay new layer tab, um, which will duplicate that layer, and then we will slide this over. Um, now this is starting to look repetitive. Okay, so we don't want to have layers and layers of repetition because it will look obvious. So a small trick that we're going to do is rotate the layer. Okay, so if we go to our edit transform and rotate 180 degrees and now there is a bit of variation now you'll notice at the edge here actually we can probably see a little bit of a straight line but when we blend that on we probably won't see that too um, too bad so what we are going to do is blend these in but we're going to join them together first so again we select both layers that we want to merge together then we're going to right click on those layers and click merge layers. We are then going to rename these um, Cirrus Clouds. Okay, I think on my tutorial file they're called Nebula. Don't ask me why I put Nebula. I was a bit tired when I originally did um, the tutorial file. And they are Cirrus Clouds. So we're going to call this one Cirrus again. Oh, spelling that wrong. So C I double R O U S. Okay, and we'll just leave clouds out for now. We'll drag that in. So, we'll go back down to our blending options, and this time we are going to apply a screen um, blend again because it loses all the color information and uses the value of white as positive, which means it will keep it, and the value of um, black as negative, in which it won't retain that information. Okay, so. Again, they're a little bit one-sided, so we'll just sort of bring that across, and I'm quite happy with that. Okay. Now, what's important is that we don't overload our image with um, detail, um, because what we can actually do is use this base here as um, a repeated texture, because we've got our layers underneath that are seamless. So we could repeat this over and over. And as you see from here, we can add these planets in. As these are key sort of image imagery, you know, iconic imagery, reference images, um, reference points, even sorry. What will happen is if these were to repeat, it would feel as though to the audience that they were repeating the level. Okay, um, but we don't want to do that at that point, and we'll just close this one off. We don't want to save that. Um, and at this stage, you know, um, we're able to actually add different reference points on different layers and have them visible at different times, create the JPEG, and we can actually extend our level okay so I think it's starting to look pretty cool so we've got our cirrus oh yes sorry and by the way we want to take the um, opacity down but we don't want to go down as far as 20% because we could we know we, could, we can hardly see that we want to take this to about 55 okay so there we go pretty cool um, starting to look pretty cool we've got our um, far, further clouds and atmospheres in the galaxy and we're starting to come closer and closer and closer to the earth so, the next thing that we want to do is start to think about adding our planets. Okay, this is where we're going to start making our images look cool. Um, 
But before we do that, we're going to go back and remember those original images that I showed you where the horizon line was at the bottom. Remember, this is a 2D side scrolling game, so our little character will come strolling across here. Okay, um, we want to mimic that atmosphere effect, so we're going to create a new layer. So go down to our create new layer tab and we're going to go to gradient. So remember when we did our other Photoshop tutorials on um, the mood boards, we showed, I talked about the gradient tool and demonstrated how to use that properly. So I'm just going to I'm just deselecting these layers so I can use the color picker to select this color again, which is really really useful. And then we can just throw that back on and we'll close that tab down, that folder down. And on this layer, we are going to actually, I don't know why I selected that, I didn't need to, we just needed the white. So please ignore that last step, it is not important. So, on our gradient tool, we want to make sure that we have opacity off down this side and 100% this side, 100% zero, which is usually the second one in on the preset, as you can see there, foreground to transparent. So click OK. Now again, we want to hold Shift before we start, and this will allow us to keep this line straight. Okay, if we hold Shift and go round, it will snap it. At, I think it's every um, 20, 25 degrees, for, uh, 45 degrees. Sorry, and we will take it up, and we have Reverse on. So we'll just click Control Z, button select Reverse, and up again. Remember, every time you use Photoshop it will preserve the settings and obviously um, if you've been working on different files that can have negative effects on your next project. Um, we've seen examples of that with regards to your uh, magazine submissions where people have worked really small A4 and then have gone up to ridiculously huge sizes on the PDFs when we've read through. Okay, this is something you need to check and need to be aware of because it does impact these sizes. And you should always, always proof your um, submissions and make sure that they are exactly how they need to be. Okay, so once we've done that, we can just call this. We'll just call this gradient. Okay, this will be um, the last sort of thing to go up because this is really our sort of horizon and the planets are in deep space theoretically okay and what we don't want is the planets to be in front of this okay um, well, I think we have taken it down to 70% as well because it is quite light here and actually when you look on those images you know we do see some of that red some of that soft blue coming through with the, with the sort of bluey grey so now we have our sort of um, pinky grey so let's move on to the planets so the first thing we need to do is actually create some get some pretty cool looking planet textures so again using um, various websites of which I will um, place on here um, and upload to Moodle you will you will find all these pretty cool textures that look like planets so I think the one that we're going to use because I think is the most sort of unplanety looking one so far is this rust leak okay so it's just like a metal p panel um, as you can see there's some features on here and the reason I selected this was it got me thinking about Jupiter um, and how those gases fly around so we are going to open that into Photoshop so we'll go to file open go to the folder where you've downloaded your textures and click the rust leak okay so what we're going to do is select an actual circle of this so we don't want to select um, oh still got the gradients all selected so we don't want to select a square because the planets aren't square okay they are circular so if we go to our elliptical marquee tool and if we go into circle and just drag out we can end up with a circle now the problem with this is when we drag this out it could be um, oval um, it could be elongated now that's not to say that planets aren't actually naturally slightly elongated and I think the earth is slightly um, but you know we want to keep this exact as possible and retain as much control so we're going to hold shift and drag okay I want to get a couple of these smaller rings in so the one thing that I do want to avoid is gaining getting this part in up here this straight line and also these bolts um, when they're in these sequential patterns okay nature um, particularly images of the planets very rarely has these sort of sequential patterns they are they are um, 
look fairly when they're exactly partitioned quite a man-made um, structure and this will be read by our audience so I'm just going to move this across slightly just to get some of these deeper colors you know because we, we, we will read into that so we're going to go to control C to copy and we're going to go back to our original file and push control V and that should bring it up quite nicely so the one thing we're going to do is just call this planet one and then we are going to create a folder and call this planets because we're going to make more than one and then we are going to create another folder within that and in that drag it in and call that planet one okay so you could call your planet a name a cool sort of mystical place um, but because we're going to have several different folders with different um, effects happening it allows us to keep track of that really really nicely okay so with our planet one then selected if we what we want to do is create a little more interesting angle so I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees so again I'm going to go to edit transform and rotate and rather than actually doing this freehand if we go up to here this degree tool we can push 45 and it will take that 45 degrees clockwise again if we push minus I'll just move my mouse move uh, minus 45 degrees it will rotate it the other way I quite like it this way okay so from here I'm going to push enter Let's try it again and there we have it oh yeah so we also need to hide um, lock and hide our gradient layer so now this is our top layer this is ahead of everything else so I'm going to have this sort of hanging in the foreground okay in the middle um, but what we want to do is as you'll notice these are incredibly straight lines now on a sort of 2d graphical illustration this would work really well um, but I want to severeize that okay so we are going to go to our filter gallery again we're going to go this time to distort and this time to spherize and it will basically take our circle layer and turn it into a circle so this time I haven't selected this layer and we're going to see what happens so okay it's made it oblong okay this is because I didn't select the layer and it's treating this whole um, image size ratio as that individual layer and it's only warped that okay so if we go to control Z we'll undo and this time we're going to select our image so again going down to that square be careful make sure you get that uh, there we go till we select it and we're going to go to filter distort spherize okay keep it at 100% keep the mode normal okay and we'll click OK so now these lines are starting to warp around that shape and become curved and stick out which is exactly what we want so we're going to go to control D undo uh, not undo sorry deselect and now what we need to do is start to add some shadow so before we add shadow or add any light we need to decide where our light source is coming from so what I decided would look pretty cool is to have this sort of moon sort of hanging under the belly glow so we're going to assume that our sun is somewhere down here sending light straight up to this planet that's then reflecting back towards us so in order to create shadow we need to again get that full circle of the object so we're going to select it again by pushing control and selecting our image it's a really fast way of selecting the layer we could of course go to select um, and uh, select all on that layer and equally do that oh no okay so it's done that so if we go to the layer select layer okay so there we go it's been that long since I've used the other route that I've completely forgot about it so we're going to create a new layer and we're going to rename this by double clicking and call this um, planet one shadow okay so at this stage we are then going to change our color back if we click this little arrow here it will bring our red to the foreground and we can go to edit fill sorry about the burp and foreground color make sure that's selected and click OK so at this stage control D again we now have our planet hidden um, but shadows we can take this up again again it looks really 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 hard 
okay in that that line is solid shadows unless there is an almost an eclipse where the sun with the sun where it might shine through very rarely look like that they fade into each other okay so we need to mimic that so we're going to use another effect in the filter gallery this time we're going to go to filter and we're going to blur there's all different types of blurs we're going to go to a gaussian blur okay and we're going to take this up so we've got the preview window here and we also have the preview in here now even at this stage it's still looking quite hard so we're going to take this up to get it back a little bit softer and uh, you know what I think I'm quite happy with that might take it down a little bit to 25 see what that looks like and yeah there we go okay cool so now we have this filtering in so there we have the shadow which I'm really happy with I think it's time to add the light reflecting off remember our sun's down and around here I think probably around this way so our shadow always needs to be going in the opposite direction to our, where our light source is coming from and as the light source moves around so if it's pointing this way or coming this side and up the shadow will move with it now actually we lose we are losing all these sort of cool shadows so I'm going to rotate our planet again um, so if we go to edit select the layer edit transform rotate and this time we want it to do a full 180 degree turn so we can push enter and enter again and look at that that looks pretty cool now so uh, we've got those cool lines showing through in addition to that we now need to work on our planet so we could retain the color information um, but I think we're going to um, change this to screen again to see what happens okay I think it glows quite a lot there so I'm not too happy with that so let me just take a look at what We've got all the images we have screen. Um, we may need to take that down. I think it's because we haven't desaturated the image. Okay, so what we're going to do is go to layer and we're going to go to layers, layer, 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 layer adjustment. Um, yep, 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 no. Okay, I can't find desaturation. so if we select that layer we should be able to do it from this image adjustments this actually right there we go okay and again we can go to our levels go to image adjustment levels and then we can start creating some depth there okay so we want to bring that up and create our sort of like moon moony planet looking because again we would have kept the colour information, but we just want to work um, from a value of 0 to 100. And if we start adding other colours, we're going to get lose sight of that. So we're going to keep it like this. So if we can control D, we can add our shadow. Okay, now we need to add some pretty cool light coming off. So what we're going to do is create an atmosphere so those of you that have played Star Wars Commander when you go into places like Tatooine um, and Dandorian I think it is you'll notice that they've added some uh, blue bluey green uh, gradients around the edge okay there are a couple of ways that we can do that and so if we go click select our planet layer go to the effects tab which is a small F and X at the bottom of the layers panel and we can go to the top one which is blending options select that and when we are here we can go to outer glow okay and create that pretty cool looking um, filter uh, which gives that sort of soft atmosphere drifting into the, the um, into space we also want to add um, an inner glow just to give it that extra bit of vibrancy to make it show that the atmosphere forms in as well okay we're going to change the colour of these to white I think they are quite on cream at the moment and we're going to take the size of the inner glow up to around sort of 30 I think because it's quite big and then the outer glow we're going to leave the size but we are going to change the colour to pure white and we're going to keep bring the opacity up slightly okay I'm quite happy with that um, but we also need to add some extra light effects on top okay to really really make that stand out 
So we're going to sort of zoom in. So I'm zooming in by pushing Control and the plus key. Okay, next to the backspace button. And obviously now we've zoomed in, we can see where my um, tablet pen has dragged um, earlier when we created those stars. Okay, we can always go back because because we've got them set layers and we know what it's called. We can easily go back and change that later on if we wish. And so we are going to create a new layer. Uh, sorry, not a new layer, a new folder. We're going to call this light effects. So light and then effects. And then we're going to create a new folder again called Planet One. So we're just going to put that put that in the light effects folder, rename that Planet One. And we're going to call the first layer uh, Planet One Low Lights. Because what we want to do is create a couple of um, different size atmosphere effects over the top of the image. Um, and we do the same thing with the background, we start off with the low filters and build that up. So we're then going to go to our brush tool and we're going to keep this quite big but not that big, probably to about 40. Okay. And we're then going to make sure we're on white and on this layer we're going to paint on. As you can see here, it's very, 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 very um, dark. So if you push Control Z, uh, not dark but very, very um, rich. We want to make sure we've got our hardness down to zero, okay? And then what we want to do is um, take the opacity down to about 12, okay? So when we paint this on, as you can see now, we're getting this really, really soft brightness appearing over the top, okay? Gives this this really sort of cool atmosphere glow, again, on top of the ones that we already did. And it's really, really simple, really quick, and I'm quite happy with that. And then we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to call this one planet. Oh, we're going to call this one planet one highlight. Okay, and then we are going to change the size of the brush. Um, not, yeah, to change the size of the brush. Yep, we're going to change. No, actually, I think we're going to keep this the same. But what we're going to do, sorry, is keep the um, opacity at 100. Or could we add it to a bit higher? Let me have a look. So if I just click on my previous file, it's Planet One. Um, yep, we can keep that on 100. So what we want to do now is show where this strong light is bouncing off. We don't want to paint the whole of this ring. In that bright in that brightness because that's what we added these layer effects for okay down here but what we do want to do is show that intensity of light perhaps where the strongest point where the sun's sort of hitting off so again we can start to add that in and fade that out okay where that light's sort of creeping around okay um we can probably add just oh we can add little bits around here okay just you know just sort of bring that out and we can and come out away from that okay so we had that on we've got some really cool looking light effects happening now we're not seeing too much of that original um, background image that planet shown through so we're going to go down to our planet and we are going to go and change the levels again because we do want to see a slightly more um, of that contrast of the detail on that surface so we go to our levels after we've selected it and we're just going to bring in some of that some of those dark bit parts okay let me see if we can bring that back out there okay so cool so at this stage um, what we want to do is potentially create that flare um, a lot stronger okay so um, on the video I have one going from the bottom but this time we're going to have um, it coming across at this cool sort of diagonal shape and see how that looks okay so in our uh, planet one folder actually no we're going to create because we only have this coming from one planet we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call that flare ray okay so once we call that flare ray we can create a new folder inside that um, called planet one even though it's going to be the only folder in there it just helps remind us which planet that is attached to 
okay and we can then create a new layer and we'll call this um, the right the flat flare ray um, base okay because it's going to be the sort of the, the, the lowest level that we're going to work on and we're going to create um, select the pen tool we want the hardness on zero for this okay because we want it to fl blend in and we're going just to paint on a small white circle there okay so what we're going to do is stretch this out to make it look like a flare sort of cross coming up across like that um, but obviously doing it like that looks really unnatural and slightly weird so we are going to warp this so this time rather than relying solely on one of these which is either scale or perspective um, scale warp we, we want to do multiple things so we're going to push control T okay I'm just going to push escape control T is the same as free transform as you can see free transform control T so we can click that and what we're going to do is bring this right up okay make it look like a flare now what we want to do is make it thinner because it looks really really strong at that point and actually we can probably take it down slightly okay we are then going to wait till um, if, well, if we go outside of one of these corners we'll see two arrows slightly curved and that means we can rotate which means we can start to bring this around and we can centralize this from this ray of light and we can sort of just keep manipulating this till we're fairly happy with it and I think something like that would do if we push on the down arrow keys we can nudge the um, the layer around till we get positioned we're happy and then we can push enter and we end up with a pretty cool looking flare now what we'll notice is this isn't actually moving at the same angle as the um, as the planet so what we're going to do is undo that and then we're by pushing con uh, control alt and z and or control z and then we're going to do it again so push control t this time we're going to bring it up same as before, I think it was around that sort of height that we was happy with it, bring in the thinness and then we're going to hold the shift key and rotate until we get 45 degrees at the top window so up here it should say 45 and once we're happy with that um, we would be actually but that wasn't the problem, the problem was it wasn't moving central with this so all the shadow so we're going to bring that around here like that and actually we're going to bring the shadow slightly around here okay so what we're going to do now is this is still looking a little bit hard a little bit unnatural and we're going to actually make that flare look slightly more real so what we're going to do is select our uh, go to our texture folder sorry open and we'll see the skies image so we double click opens that okay now we're going to do the same thing again we want to use the screen blur we want to create this black as black as possible so it doesn't show and actually crop these clouds out okay so what we're going to do is go to our image we don't want to desaturate it this time because we want to keep these natural sort of colors showing through and actually add a little bit of variance to the image um, even if it is only really 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 subtle so the first thing we're going to do is go to our levels okay and we're going to bring the darkness up right until that flare or well, most of the sky is dark but also that flare is, is visible as well um, and so some of these strokes are okay what better way to um, produce a flare than to use a natural one okay so you can click OK and then we're going to crop the image down okay with the crop tool so sorry I've got, I kind of rushed that there so the crop tool is the fifth one down of the menu and if you drag that on the screen which is like the select tool we'll be able to frame the windows in so we just want to get these edges in and we're just going to take this down here um, and we're going to push enter now as you can see this here is really really square and we don't want to retain that because we're going to end up with a really really flat surface showing from the blue so what we're going to do is again get our clone tool 
Uh, that's a bit big. Take our push size down to about 11, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, 15, 16. And I'm going to click OK. Let's click OK and click Alt. Select the darker area, and we're going to paint this blue away. Okay. Oh, we've kind of drifted into the blue there. So you can see now I've gone in. It's starting to paint blue, and you can see the blue under that nozzle. Okay. See so yeah, how it's blue and white as we go into the sun. So let's go back to the dark and just go back over that stuff there. We can just put that in. Okay. And actually we're just going to add some a little bit of purple detail. Um, because we want to sort of keep it consistent with the rest of the image. So if we start there and work down, actually it's a bit too much. So again, we're just going to keep working on it till we're sort of happy with it. This may take a while. Um, but yeah, I think that that's a little bit heavy, sorry. So control Z, just undo it a couple of times. Find that dark. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Now I'm happy with it. Okay. So again, if we try to select the image here because the layer's locked, we won't be able to select no matter how much I do it. So if we double click the layer, we can click OK and as you can hear the fireworks have just started. It's lit up my office very, very nice. So we click control and you'll see the marching ants around the edge so that means we can select it control c and then on the keyboard and then go back to our image we are working on control v and we want this layer to be in the planet one okay and um yeah i forgot to say as well our flare base should be um opacity should be turned down slightly as well uh, so about 50 percent i think and then we want to change this one to flare ray okay because this is our like this is our big finale so to speak our big flare the main light source click ok and then we're going to click a um what blend should we do here we should click this on a screen burn at, and actually the one our one underneath should be on screen as well okay really really useful and actually if you pass it on that can be a further up okay uh, we will need to resize this flare so we can go back to our select tool and go to our layer place it over where that is coming from as you can see that blue is really really strong um, but as we scale this down Again, holding shift in the corners from push control T, and we can sort of bring this in, and it should blend quite nicely the blue um, in. And then we can use the arrow keys on the keyboard and just reposition that in a nice central position. And there we go. So we are almost there because from this point onwards, all you will need to do is add more planets, okay? Like I've done here, it's the same process again, just adding more planets, thinking about the light further, what the light source is over here, which is what's going up. So if I was to draw a big sort of circle, just to demonstrate this, if my sun was sitting at this point, we've got light going up here, got light going up there, Got light going that way, and obviously light going that way, light going this way. But obviously, the further away from the light source, the weaker it gets. Okay, so actually, this one here would probably be a little bit brighter as well. So, for, for your information, for future reference, when you add your other planets in. So, we go back, and once we are here, um, what we need to do is, as you can see, this shadow here is dark but it hasn't taken any of these other clouds that are in front of us into um, consideration. So our shadow, or should I say, uh, our cirrus clouds need to be above um, the shadow of the planet. So what we're going to do is take our cirrus file folder and drag it above our planets. And actually what we can see now is a small cloud, but still again we've got this really, really dark shadow. And so we are going to take our mist, place that into our over no not into our overlay because we don't want to drag that this actual do we? I think we do. Let's try it. Okay. Um, no. No no. It's it's sort of killed that information, hasn't it? 
Is it? No. Okay, cool. So, there we have it. We have our clouds and our detail over our original image. Actually, there is something. There is, there is still something causing me problems here, um, which I'm not happy with. So we have that in there. Let's just take this back out. There we go. Okay, it's the way it's blending. So we'll have our overlay in our light effects folder. Okay, and our cirrus obviously um, underneath that. Or oh, should we bring that above? Should we bring that above? Okay, there we go. Um, sorry, bring that above the flare ray. Okay, so um, there you have it. We have our gradient at the top, remember, because that's the one closest to us. Next, our cirrus clouds. The flare ray because we want that to stand out. Then we have our sort of lighting effects and our planets. Uh, with the flare ray, we also have um, our cirrus cloud. Sorry, no light effects. We have our overlay, okay, which contains a lot of the atmospheric information as well. And then we have our planets with our first one. Obviously, for each next planet, create another sub folder called Planet Two. And obviously, you got your background layers. And we create this really cool sort of scene. So once you've added another couple more. Um, planets using that same process you'll end up with this really really cool looking um, planet scene okay and there's no reason why you couldn't add any more cloud layers um, to create extra mist effects okay so um, for this week you will be required if you want to you can complete this tutorial as a demonstration but you will be required to use your own mood board select your own sort of colors select your own planet styles um, to incorporate and embody um, your mood boards so analyze the color themes and create a really really cool looking atmosphere um, to go on your presentation boards um, by week 13 okay so good night